Ethers.js is the best library for interacting with the Ethereum blockchain, but if you're coming from another library like Web3, it can be a little confusing. I'm going to break down the two most important objects that you need to understand for Ethers.js, providers and signers. I'll explain what they are, when to use each, and how to initialize them. Let's go. High level, a provider can only read from the blockchain, but a signer can read and write. Well, let's go a little deeper. There are two ways that I commonly create providers. If my code is attached to an app with a user interface, I do this. New ethers.providers.web3provider and then I pass in window.ethereum where window.ethereum is an API that MetaMask inserts into the browser, allowing users to interact with the blockchain. Given that, it makes sense that this only works if you're writing code that is connected to a browser. But if you're not, if I'm writing code that's just in a script and not in an app that uses the browser, I'll create a provider like this, where the Infura testnet URL is an API for Infura, a company which operates nodes on the blockchain and allows you to use them for interacting with the blockchain. And note that instead of calling Web3 provider, I'm doing JSON RPC provider. When I say that a provider interacts with the blockchain in a read-only manner, that means it can read the current state of the blockchain, the current state of a contract. So you can do things like this. You can check the balance of Ether in a wallet. You can pull code for a contract or get information about a specific transaction or block, including data like how much Ether was spent on gas. But since a provider can only read data, it can't change the state of anything on the blockchain or send transactions would change the state of anything. Because changing the state of something on the blockchain requires an address and Ether to pay for gas. That's where a signer comes into play. Where a provider can only read data, a signer can read and write, aka make changes. If I'm working on an app with a user interface, which uses the browser, I typically prompt the user to connect their MetaMask wallet like this, where provider is the provider we initialized above. On that, we call the string eth underscore request accounts, and this prompts the user to connect their wallet. If you're using any decentralized apps around the internet, you've probably connected your wallet before. And then on provider, we call .getSigner, and this returns a signer object. But if I'm writing code that requires a signer, but there's no app and no related browser activity to connect a wallet, then we have to do it in a different way. Here we're using the wallet object, which inherits from signer, so it's able to do all the same things. And what we can do is pass in the secret key of our wallet, and that creates a wallet object. And by default, the wallet doesn't have a provider, but we can connect one. And that gives us our signer with which we can interact with the blockchain. If you find the video you're watching helpful, do me a huge favor. Scroll down to the thumbs up, give it a click, and then hit subscribe. It helps keep me motivated to keep making awesome and in-depth blockchain tutorials to help you out. Now back to writing code. Here's an example of using a signer to execute a transaction. Given a contract, we can connect our signer with this dot connect syntax, and then we can call a function that exists on the contract itself. This is the Uniswap router contract. And here we're calling a function exact input single which is one of the functions you can use on that contract to programmatically swap tokens on Uniswap. Now here, we're connecting our signer again to the wrapped Ether contract, which manages wrapped Ether tokens, and we're calling approve on that. And in this case, by passing in the address of that Uniswap router contract and an approval amount, this we're giving Uniswap permission to access wrapped Ether in our wallet. Now that's not the only way you can use a signer to run transactions. You can also create a transaction and then on your signer call send transaction and pass in that transaction object. Now there are a lot more methods and even more types of providers that you can check out in the Ethers.js documentation. 
but above is how you'll typically see me use providers and signers in my tutorials. I hope you found that helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.